What's up guys? We just got to Palos Verdes right now to Johnny's house. We're gonna check out his green Mean Machine Tundra and Matt Cherniga's classic OG pre-runner. Let's check this thing out. This is real pre-runner paradise, dude. California dreaming. How's it going, guys? What's up, man? Thank you so much for inviting us here. You guys are awesome, man. First of all, this house is amazing. This is like, I feel like it's like a mafia house, bro. <laughs> this is where we got the trucks. But um, yeah, dude, I was hoping we could kind of check out the trucks, you know, and kind of hear about them. Johnny, let's check this thing out, man. I can already tell this bumper is used right here, bro. <laughs> you guys are using this thing. So, uh, is this thing street legal? Yes, it has a uh, license plate. It's currently registered and what? passes smog. What? <laughs> we got no window, no lights, but hey, dude, that's that's awesome, man. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, if plates make it street legal, I guess it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has a smog guy, huh? So what is this, a 2002, 2003 it's a Tundra? 2001 Tundra with a 2006 4.7 okay. Tundra motor. Nice, dude. Yeah. So you kept the original 4.7 instead of? Kept everything Toyota. Awesome. Yeah, because we built it to, I uh, wanted to race class eight. Okay. So I just try to keep everything to the book. The full frame is there. Nothing that's nice. Notched. I mean, it's. Oh it's yeah, that's back. right, huh? Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, because I mean, like, the first thing that people do is you know, swap out the motor and chop the frame off and try to get, you know, yeah. as much wheel travel as they can in the, in the rear. But if you're racing class eight, that's, they're very strict yeah, about that, right? Yeah, the motor that I guess was made by the manufacturer. By the manufacturer. There's a certain number that, that could be produced that it could be in your car. But unfortunately, Toyota only had 4.7 in okay. 2001 and 5.7 didn't come late to about, I want to say 07. Yeah, but dude, the, the 4.7s are like, known for killing it dude yeah. for having so much power and i don't know what it is about like the the toyota power plants but even though like even like the old 3.4 motors yeah, they're screamers. They, dude they kill it man they're screamers. this thing i think tax out at like 6250 almost all gear all, all four gears but nice man <laughs> very cool dude i see the 4.7 is not in there right now no uh the motor actually <laughs> is out and getting rebuilt i blew the head gasket in the uh, glam is actually going down sand highway okay there's just on it for a long, long time, and the uh, radiator had a crack in it, and I didn't know. Oh shoot! Yeah. <laughs> From the bottom. So. How long were you running that thing before it blew? Uh, I want to say for a good, just you know, five minutes. I think from Osborne Lookout, I never lifted and just kept going. And yeah, who 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 can lift at Osborne Lookout? Not very many people. <laughs> Not many you can't people. lift right there, bro. That's the spot to to hold it wide don't open, hold dude. Hold it wide open and don't, don't look back. Right on. Yeah, it's the Toyota, dude. That's yeah. the that's the thing, man. Those things go forever, dude. Yeah, you can put the herd on them and they'll you know start up at the next day. Tell me what's up with this kit, dude. Are, yeah. Is this all? Obviously, this is stock right here. The stock point. Yeah, but so stock up points, here when it was in the rule book back uh back in 2000 2005 when i started it oh okay uh, oh so you started building this in 2005, 2005 yeah oh so this dang okay 11 year project uh, hold on hold on say that one more time 11 year project 11 year pro 11 year project you guys you see it takes a long time to do this Patience. Patience. Okay. Dedication. <laughs> dedication, dude. Freaking uh, cup of noodles and wearing the same shoes, bro. Yeah, <laughs> trying to justify how long your your truck's getting. Oh uh, yeah, I, I think I'm trying to make myself not feel so bad. I'm coming up to the 10 year mark, so you know I'm I'm feeling strong, guys. You need to step it up, James. Yeah, I think so, dude. I think <laughs> I, I'm crying inside right now. Yeah, but dude, this thing's a beast, man. I I mean, did you guys ever run at least wrong or no? Never. Oh, okay. So it's always been linked. Yeah. Like, okay. We maybe changed, uh, went up to billet aluminum arms just like maybe a year ago. Yeah, those are beasts too, man. Those look great. Matt, did you design those or? Yeah, we, we designed everything in house. And okay. Then, uh, sent it out to get everything done. Nice. Uh, um, so time is 2.5s and that was, that was all race series and that was, that was all like, you know, I could get. That's so what I, I did. That was all, it was out. It's not right. 2.0. So yeah. we stuck with that. Just so 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 when you say 2.5 like so the, uh, what, what they're talking about guys the yeah so like a lot of <laughs> yeah a lot of these shocks are are 2.5 a lot of the guys are running like bigger shocks and stuff like that now but 2.5s work they yeah. work dude and that's and, all that was pretty much out uh, yeah at that time back in 2000 2005 bro, bro <laughs> and that's me right there so that's why i have yeah. that same size shock but you know we're here to prove it to you guys that this you know it's not about the size, guys, okay? <laughs> That's how you use it. It's how you use it. <laughs> so, all right, cool, man. Very cool, dude. Well, yeah, dude. Um, So, what are we talking here? Is this, is it, do you have limit straps on this or is it, yes. uh, yeah? So, the front is uh, strapped and it cycles 18 inches of travel. Okay. Um, billet upper arm that was made by Nexus Metalworks. Nice. Um, lower arm uh, as well. 
18 inches of clean travel, huh? Yep. Nice, dude. Um, and the rear, we're, we're uh, pushing 27 inches. 27, damn. We've got a you know, 3.0 bypass, a little 2.5 coilover. Yeah. So I had to go big somewhere, and that was the only thing I that's could where it is. fit. Yeah, yeah so dude. What is this? This is a 18? 18. Dang, yeah. look at that. And the frame's still there. Dang, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> wild. Clears. That's wild, man. And I see you guys strengthened up the frame back here. Yeah, we put the double plates on the frame. Get, kind of give it that little trophy truck look. Oh, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Very cool, man. Well, this is dope, dude. Maybe we can uh, open it up and kind of yeah. check it out in there. Yeah, yeah. We, we went, I said we went through the rule book. We made oh, the yeah. cage. Go for it. Two spec. Kept the doors still working. Nice, dude. Um, and pretty much, this is, it's kind of like a jungle gym in here, but... Hell yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, this is the spec for score, right? Yeah. So, so. To a score, uh, score spec. Okay, cool. So they went, uh, at the time Matt we got the book and asked me, are you serious? I'm like, you know, make it as safe as you can and make yeah. it, you know, to the, you know. That's dope. To the rule book, uh, you know. That's cool, man. So, so yeah, I mean, dude, jungle gym, but dude, this is what's up. This is, you know, this is the safety precautions. Yeah. They so require, the back, right? The, the pumpers, Parker pumpers in the back, spare drive shaft. So for our, for our dudes at home that don't know, Parker pumpers are for what? Uh, clean air. Clean when air. In the desert and you're running a windshield, hook this sucker up to your helmet. Right. And it filters through it uh, right in the back. Through that and can. basically so so people can get some clean air. Clean air. So yeah. are, are you guys, um, oh you got a spare drive shaft here spare too, Spare drive huh? shaft, uh, impact gun will go in this bag. Nice. Triangles. Nice. Shovel thing is just left in there from last race. We you never got had your batteries are here. Back. Yeah, dual batteries, Odysseys. Nice. Never yeah, dude, you know those. Hell yeah, dude. That's good, um, man. You got your your uh, fire, fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers. Dude, this <laughs> is clean, like dude. This is really cool. Yeah, I went with this idea. Uh, I think I saw off a Herb's truck uh, yeah. back when I was when I was a kid back in high school. Yeah. And they had used uh, marine gauges. Okay. And they're one, they're one of their one of their trophy trucks. I can't remember, but I always wanted that. So yeah, you know, one day when I had the money, I was able to buy the gauges, and then I was back to eating, like you said, the top ramen. And yeah, eating the top for, ramen, for a bro. Good while. <laughs> thank you, thank you, top ramen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for making trucks like this, making possible. me stay alive. Yeah, dude. While I build, build this thing, dude. Oh, dude, I know. So, uh, so this is a common thing for people to do, right? Like to go straight to the tubing right behind, right? For yeah. for the seatbelts, because yeah. And then we double up the tabs, just you know. The double yeah. share the tabs just you know because you know when you're racing you never know yeah leverage of whoever's sitting co-driver if they're skinny or if they're fat right 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 right. you don't want any tabs breaking or seat belts yeah dude i think some people have put these things to the floor and that's that's bad for your back right because mm -hmm. like the pressure like a yeah, pulling it, it tighter you. it compresses yeah. your back right and yeah. other guys will actually run another bar straight across okay and just keep this shorter especially if you have you know you have you would access the back of the cab yeah if you have stuff in there especially if it's a steel cab truck Right. You know, you want to utilize every Everything. inch you can, Everything, and, and yeah. it's what I did here, and it's still a pain to get. I think I'm the only one that can really get in and out of my get truck. It. <laughs> it's pretty much built for someone that's yeah know, five six. Got you, under. got you. So uh, no, nah, dude, this. Technique. You know what, man? I, I we've seen some trucks that are really tight, but this you guys really utilize the space good, bro. This looks great, man. This looks really cool, and I love how the doors, doors how the still doors function. still function, dude. Uh, Door still. slammer, man. So so what what's next for this thing? So. Obviously, get the motor back get in the motor it. Motor back in, um, and then uh, once we get the motor back in, we're gonna just kind of primarily focus on the suspension. Okay. Uh, not necessarily go bigger shocks. You know, that's like, that's the easy go-to, but there's a lot of stuff we'd have to change on the front end, and I don't want to. Okay. I keep the originalia and make these make these shocks work because they did it somehow you mm. know, 15 years ago. Yeah. Why can't we do it now? So. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, the shock tuning is is crucial right yeah i mean that's that's part of the whole ride dude and especially i don't want to break the bank you know not for sure can get those big shocks <laughs> for sure dude i mean like the like you said these shocks have been around for years they've yeah. worked and you just got to find that right tuning and, yeah. and make it happen with this thing <laughs> yeah bro <laughs> yeah, very cool man legal. that's dope man very cool and then what what rear end is in this guy that's uh it's a dirt tech and it was actually uh desert specialties where is where i got it from okay and it was a collaboration at the time between uh desert specialties and dirt tech okay desert specialties was uh out in long beach and is, i believe they, they built the hubs and then they got their they collaborated on the rear end with so uh, it's a full, full floater full floater yeah cool man very cool and then what hubs are you guys running in the front uh desert specialties desert specialties yeah too? Cool. Yeah, Very they cool. moved out of, they moved back east and they used to be in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, that's but they've held up. I hadn't had any issues with them servicing nice. them and 
Just so you know. The the axles, what are you guys running? Is it 35, 40 spline or? I think it's 30, 35 spline. 35 spline? Yeah. Okay, very and cool. We, we just re-geared the thing to uh, four six sevens. Four six sevens. Yeah, I had 483s and it was a dog after we knew at the Mint 400 that the like little silt beds and yeah. the dry lake bed. Uh -huh. This thing had no power. <laughs> oh man, okay. So we had to change it up a little change bit. Change it up a little bit to get so, you know get every ounce of that that uh, rice out of that motor. Right. Keep moving. So when you, when are you guys thinking, man? When are we gonna when are we gonna see this thing rip? When are we gonna get some? Uh, you guys have a pismo trip planned. I should have this thing back together in a month. What? Yeah. You guys hear that, dude? We might we might get some dune footage of this thing in Pismo, man. I'm stoked. Very so good. Get this eight truck off the ground. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that'll be awesome. Oh, I'm sure, dude. We'll we'll find something to send it out for him. Yeah. We'll help, we'll find something with a good runway. Send that thing. There, take cool. off. All right, guys. So we're doing a two for one today, which is pretty rad. We're actually meeting up with Matt Chernega right here. Chernega. Chernega. Matt Chernega. Don't forget it. <laughs> pretty much talking to myself. Um, Matt is is an OG man. This guy right here. We go way back. Yeah. Dude, like, I don't even know how many, I don't even want to say the how many years. The gray, like, the gray sideburns right there. Yeah, right. <laughs> the pepper, the pepper, bro. Matt's, Matt's an OG man, so he's going to take us through this truck that is is legendary. Cool thing about Matt is he's, I think I've even called him this, he's a lone wolf. This guy is so hard to catch out there. Like, what? We'll be in Glamis, you know, for the whole weekend. We find out he comes for a day or two, and then we see pictures of him like 15 feet in the sky. We're like, where were you, man? But yeah, dude, uh, take us through the truck, man. To tell us about it. Sounds tell us good. about this beast, man. So this is a, started off as a 96 Tacoma. 96 and, uh, Tacoma. That was uh, new back in the day. So okay. To give you an idea of how old this build was. This thing took us eight years to finish. Dang. Uh, obviously, you know, as teenagers you don't have an endless budget so you gotta start somewhere yeah um, eight years huh yeah okay it was when uh actually, and that's when i think i met you was yeah. at one of those expos right so when it came out bonson and i started building these uh, his Tacoma and this one at the same time. So I for those of you guys that don't know uh, Bonzin, Ryan Bonzin is AKA mayor of Glamis. Okay, back to you, Matt. Pretty much this thing is a tube chassis truck. Okay. It has uh, 27 inches of travel in the front and 31 in the rear. Cool, it's cool. Uh, four linked and center mounted suspension. Oh man, I feel like you're opening like a Christmas present for everybody right now, bro. <laughs> Look at this beast, dude. Dang. So the fiberglass is uh, uh, McQueen's fiberglass in okay. Gardena. So, so, so McQueen made this glass. Yeah. And so, this is for the, the 96, right? Yeah, it's a conversion, a Tundra conversion for the 96 caps. Dang, man. This came out so damn good. And I, the, that fender flare in the back looks so clean too, man. Yeah, so it's a uh, based around like a like an older like old school like trophy truck style. Okay. That side. Yeah, it's a '96. It took you about eight years to build. Tube chassis. Tell me a little more about the front. What do we got going on here? It's a center mount design, so it's all tube chassis. So it's pivoted a lot tighter than your traditional bolt-on kits. Okay. Um, it's running uh, 2.5 coilovers and 2.5 uh, five tube bypass, which are in there right now. They're being rebuilt. Okay. Um, but it's all laid out, uh, CAD design suspension. You know, nice. Doing that style back in the day and then... What made you take that big leap to get rid of the whole like stock front frame? You know what I mean? And move to like the more the center mounted. So a friend of mine who worked for us way back in the day, his name was Andrew uh, Pearly. And he thought it would be a good idea to cut the front end of this off and do a full center mount suspension, which at the time uh, next to no pre-runners were running that style suspension. No, nah, dude, nobody. I mean, even even today, like, that's a big deal. Yeah. And, and, and and let me tell you, it, it is scary chopping off a perfectly good truck, man, you know, where there's where there's other uh, options available. Yes. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. like, I'm sure everybody, you heard yes. Beam It. I'm, heard you, I heard, I'm sure you heard people say, like, a bolt-on kit from some like reliable yeah. companies, but you guys, you guys wanted that 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 A arm travel, huh? Yeah, we uh, we just wanted to build something that no one had at the time, and that was kind of what started the inspiration on this build. You know, we had uh, a lot of talent, um, you know, through the guys that worked at our shops, and um, a lot of drive, and yeah. uh, we knew it was going to be something that wasn't built overnight. Yeah, uh, especially 
you know, financial wise and time wise, like it's a dedication. You guys are freaking like pioneers in that sense of like pre runners to, to go to that level. You know what I mean? At, at that time period. Cause like I said, I mean, even till this day, that's not really happening too much, which is wild, you know? Yeah. In, you know, so the, the motor behind uh, this truck is a 4.7 uh, Tundra V8. Okay. Uh, so keeping it in the Toyota family, huh? Keep, yeah. And it's, uh, it's it's been uh, like once over. Uh, we put a supercharger on it. Okay. Um, to get a little bit of extra power and torque out of the thing. It's uh, okay. It's a very fun, fast truck, uh, but it's also not dangerously fast. So you're always in control, which is nice. Right, 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 Although right. Sometimes it'd be nice to have more power. It's not always uh, necessary in a truck like this because it's so small and light. Right, right. Very cool, man. So, um, did you guys machine your own hubs, or are these no, somebody so, else's hubs? So or? these were the original Pro Am uh, spindles and hub setup. Okay. So this was literally the first ones off the shelf when they started manufacturing these. No way, dude. That's um, wild. And so, and and all this time they're still killing it. Yeah, and they're they're amazing products. You That's know. sick. So they. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely took care of us back in the day and still yeah. taking care of us today. That's sick, dude. And, and I mean, anybody who knows, man, that's like some of the first things to go is the hubs, right? Like you can yeah. get a long travel, you know, you can put a long travel kit on the truck, man. You guys don't handle those hubs. You guys are in, in trouble. Yes. I, I learned that every day in my F-150. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gamble, <laughs> you know, driving that thing down the street. Awesome. So uh, what were the numbers in the front again? Man, uh, look at that 20, jam. Uh, 27 inches of travel um, and that's strapped. Holy moly, dude! Twenty trophy truck, bro. Those are trophy truck numbers. <laughs> and in, in, any way we could take a look under the hood? Yeah. That is such a bitch in front clip, dude. It looks so good. So let's take a look at this thing, man. Twenty-seven, huh? Dang. That's yeah, nice, dude. With the truck fully bottomed out, you have about an inch and three quarters to the floor. Nice. So it likes to... Lane frame low rider, dude. It likes when, to when hit you... the bottom when you're going through some deep pups. Okay. So you got them... Yeah, you got the limit straps right here. That's cool. Super clean, dude. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I remember this truck from forever ago and th this thing is is just always out there you know and that's why like we said the lone wolf thing man you go you do your thing you rip you come back and you know, you're always killing it in this thing very cool man if you want to take us around the back of this thing maybe we could check it out yeah, so it's a four link suspension um it has a dirt tech pro uh full floater 40 spine axle um with the cnc brakes okay um i'm running uh three uh 3.0 uh three tube uh, King bypasses, uh, 18 inch, and uh, 2.5 coilovers, uh, 16 inch. I'm sorry, what axle size is in that thing? It's a 40 spline. 40 spline, okay, 40 yeah. spline. Okay. So this axle actually was originally for uh, one of the trophy trucks, and they went a different route, so we were able to swoop it up at a pretty good price. And Heck yeah. I uh, could, yeah, have, been, could the... have been happier with that. <laughs> nice, dude. It's one of the main things that you guys need to do is uh, make in, sure you got the right rear ends, the right yeah, hubs, yeah. and everything else will come together. You got your battery set up. Dude, this, this whole thing is just set up so clean, man. I love this thing. I've never really had a chance to like appreciate it like this, you know? But dang, dude. How's the airflow with this thing back here? Um, it's uh, The airflow is really nice. Uh, no overheating problems. Okay. Um, you well, know, it's a Toyota. You hear that, guys? It's a Toyota motor. That's probably why <laughs> no overheating problems. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> It definitely helps not having a front windshield or a rear windshield, so the airflow just goes straight through that radiator. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, the inside, uh, you know, typically you have just a very unfinished inside, but this one we kind of wanted to dial it in, make it a little bit more cozy. Oh, for sure, dude. So Dang, did, bro, uh, you got the sun. We wrapped everything in leather, and then... Uh, you know, kind of keeping it real with the original sunroof. Yeah, dude, that is hard. <laughs> that is so cool, man. Very cool. Dude, this looks great, bro. This looks so clean. You know, as you build a truck, it never stops. So the second the thing's running good, it's healthy, uh, nothing's breaking, you tend to put money into other areas. Yeah. And I caught myself wanting to dial in the inside. Nice. Um, you, know, you know, make that as clean as I could get. 
you know, so when the family's cruising around, they feel comfortable as well. This thing is so bitching, man. Did you build this just for like for fun, for play? Are you? Do you ever plan on racing it? So this truck at the at this moment is just a toy. Okay. Um, I uh, we have raced it. Uh, I lent it to a couple friends and business partners of ours uh, to do the the. The powder puff series which it got first oh heck yeah uh, her name was emily lane she was really on it she did a really great job um, pretty cool you know but for as for myself i love it as a toy yeah and i uh i'll watch my friends race and do their thing and i'll be there to fix it when it breaks yeah right right <laughs> i mean what are your what are your favorite spots to go to with this thing like where do you like um, to go i would say it's homes and glamis uh, homes and glamis I, I, love, I love the sand i love uh you know, filling the power and being able to hit the big dunes, going in the back, uh, yeah. you know, throwing the paddle tires on. Uh, you know, it's just, that's kind of where I went when I was young and I still go there, you know, a yearly basis now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the whole thing is, I know I got to drive it out, but at the same time, it's built to destroy. And yeah, you, dude. <laughs> yeah. As, as nice as you keep them, that's, you, you drive them just as hard. So Hell yeah, dude, that's what's up. You know, for for Glamis, like the whole thing skid plated underneath. Yeah. So when it does like, you know, slap the chassis, um, it's protected. It's not bending and breaking everything. But yeah. Uh, you know, it's Very that's cool. where my passion is, and that's dope, you know, man. And that's Very cool. That's what brought me to the sport. You know. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, hopefully, if you see us, come say what's up. And then uh, if we yeah. if we catch this guy, man, this, <laughs> this guy's all over the place. Very yeah. cool. And I appreciate everything uh, Terra Crew does for us and the community and what they're what they stand for. Oh, so dude, thanks, brother. Make sure you give them a good follow and uh, hell yeah, dog. This guy forever. So thanks, that's what's bro. up, man. Thank appreciate you, man. It. Thank you, thank you. Dang, dude, straight killing it on the mean streets of Palos Verdes. <laughs> dude, man, it's crazy to see the front of this thing just woo, come up, man. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man, this truck. You, uh, you guys coming out here with us. Hell yeah, brother. You know, checking us out. Thank you so guys. much, man. We'll definitely catch up, man. We'll see this thing in action, guys. Freaking Matt, the Palos Verdes gangster over here, just ripping it up. Yeah. <laughs>